everyone, all the way with Alloway here at Outfest 2013 with the writer and director of Pit Stop, which is a gala centerpiece at the festival, Yen Tan. Are you enjoying your opening night? You just had the screening. Yes, yes. No, it's, it went really well. That's awesome. So this piece is so great because you actually started at the Outfest Screenwriting Lab. Right. Um, and a lot of people don't even know these opportunities exist. So how did you get involved with that screenwriting lab? Um, I just submitted, you know. I mean, I knew they were doing it year-round. And there's not that many sort of like um, LGBT-oriented Right. writing programs, you know, and so, of course, you know, a lot of people would know about health crisis and lab, um, so I just submitted, you know, like, and then, and then I got in, and then... Now, how does this script evolve? I mean, the story you're telling is, is of unconventional relationships, you have a man who's getting over a relationship with an ex, with his friend, his ex-wife, and right. his daughter, and then a man who uh, devotes his life to sort of developing this relationship with a past lover who's in a hospital. So I'm curious that intimate of the story, how it developed at the lab. Yeah, um, I think it was, generally the story was like pretty much this is uh, when I went to the lab. I think what I got out of the lab was like them, was the mentors telling me that I need to be more specific. I need to basically flesh things out, which is comes down to whether it's descriptions or even character traits or even just fleshing out a moment, you know, and not just writing in a very general way. And I think that's the part of it that I really got a lot of yeah. in the lab. Well, and you also have an amazing team around you, Eric Steele producing, right. David Lowry. Um, so how did you get this team of filmmakers together? I knew them for a long time. I mean, we were all growing filmmakers around the same time in Dallas. Texas! Yeah. Texas. So it was like a natural progression, you know. I mean, we've worked together in different capacities before, and then it's just like, I mean, this is kind of like a great year for us just because yeah. we were working on films that got into, you know, like a big festival like Sundance, and then it was like, it was like, you know, people are asking us like how it came about, and it's like we kind of were doing this for a long time already, you know. Yeah. So it's like. So well, and your cast is fantastic too. You have Amy, who now is on The Killing and right. has been in Upstream Color. So, how did you find your actors? Because this film really relies on them. Amy's a friend of David Lowry. Okay. And so, when I met her, I didn't really know her yet, but I just sort of started talking to her uh, as a, you know, I'm friends with David because David cut, edited something in China, which is the film that Amy directed. Yes. Uh, so, it was just like we were kind of always running the same circles. Tim and then, stuff by. Yeah, everything. he's kind of like the, um, he's kind of like pulls everything together. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, you're making a movie about homosexuality in Texas. Mm -hmm. Right. And being from Texas, I know that that's, you know, got to cause some anxiety. So what was kind of, did you have any fears or anxieties about telling this kind of story in a primarily conservative state and community? Um, I mean, not so much. I mean, the shooting itself was very smooth. Uh, we didn't run into any problems. I mean, the repercussions that we got were actually it happened earlier, like during pre-production, when oh, really? we were casting actors. And what we noticed was like there was a lot of like we were very upfront in our casting descriptions of what the roles were, so people would still submit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then there were people who made the callbacks. And, and they get there they and get like, more scenes to read, to right? Dude. And then it's like they know what it is, and yeah. then they say, "Whoa, I can't, like, I don't yeah. want to do this," you know? So, so in that sense, and it wasn't just even like the guy parts. I mean, there are people who got read for the wife part, yeah. who would say, "Well, my husband is a minister, and I don't think I can participate in this." Wow. What's so great about Pit Stop is that everyone, I think, if they open themselves up to it, can relate to feelings of isolation, right, right. to feelings of dealing with love and and getting the love that you deserve. So as far as those themes in the film, because I think everyone has that unconventional relationship, right. that they're like, yeah, I'm still friends with my ex, we went on a picnic, right. and you're like, what? Yeah. So what has reception to that particular thing been like? You guys have done all these festivals. Yeah. Uh... I think because I don't, I'm not consciously politicizing the film or the message of the film. Um, I think it makes it. 
I feel like once people watch it, then they understand what it is. Yeah. Uh, and then if they... It's hard to not relate to what the characters are going through because it's completely like identifiable and it's like mm -hmm. universal and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like I feel like that's kind of like the re yeah. reception we're getting. Like for instance, you know, when we played at Sundance, that was essentially when most of the audience were not LGBT people, right. you know. And mm -hmm. so it was interesting to see how the film would be received there, and it was received very well. I mean, if anything mm -hmm. else, we were very surprised by how much uh, like. Um, heterosexual women really yeah. respond to the film. Like yeah. middle-aged women tend to be very um, passionate about their responses, which is which is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and it just goes to show that the film is powerful because you guys did Sundance mm -hmm. and South by, and right. now you're a centerpiece selection at Outfest, right, right. which is fantastic. So. Has the road been bumpy? I know you guys like fundraise to get the film funded at the Texas Theater, which right, Eric right. runs. Um, are there any other hiccups that you know to, to filmmakers out there? You would say like stick through it, like yeah. you're gonna make it. Distribution is still rough, yeah. regardless of how we look at it. Yeah. Nobody really knows the answer, regardless yeah. of whether that person has experience or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, ultimately, you have to do what you. Do. Believing, the end, you know, and you I have to do what you yeah, believe. Yeah, because in. I think, I think ultimately that has some sort of value to it. Yeah. You know, like even even if something that you believe in is not like this huge success or whatever, mm -hmm. I think it it still be something that people can pick up on. Right. You know, when it's something that's genuine, it's something that's sincere, mm -hmm. something that you're passionate about, it's something people are going to respond to. Right. Yeah. And people are responding to that with you and mm -hmm. with pit stop. So. You're getting all this attention as a director, and, and this is such a breakout for you. So, what's next? Uh, vacation. Yeah, no, no, no vacation. I <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm s like working on some projects right now. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out. I, I would say like I would characterize right now as like dating projects and trying to figure out who I want to commit dating to. Dating projects. Uh, because it is a commitment when you yeah. work on a feature. It's like three or five years or however many years well, of your life. Well, this feature you know? is like with your family, pretty much that you made it. Right, you know? right, right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah. stick with it. Yeah. Thank you, Yang. Thank you, Outfest 2013.